Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the anatomy and physiology of the spleen. Now, we'll do some very basic stuff about the spleen first, and in some other past videos, we've talked about one function of the spleen, being the graveyard of red blood cells, but then we're going to talk about its other function, which actually has to do with the lymphatic system and the immune system. Okay, so first of all, here's the spleen. So the spleen is an organ that's found on the patient's left side. So it's going to be on the opposite side of the abdominal region as the liver. Liver is more on the patient's right side, spleen is on the left. And you can see that the spleen, in contrast to a lot of the other organs here, is a lot smaller. If you're looking at a cat cadaver, which we have in my anatomy and physiology lab, the spleen is very, very thin in appearance. It's probably atrophied quite a bit, but much smaller uh, than most of these other GI organs over here to the, to the patient's right. Okay? Now, um, if we look at the spleen, the spleen, of course, has a blood supply. Um, blood is going to move into the spleen through the splenic artery. Of course, that artery is going to divide many, many times, um, and it's going to supply the various regions of the spleen. And then, of course, it's going to be drained by the splenic vein. Now, the reason I mention this is because it's important to understand that even though the spleen is going to share some functions with the lymph nodes that we talked about in the previous videos, the spleen does not actually filter lymph. Notice it's actually blood that's coming to the spleen. And so the spleen, even though it's classified as a secondary lymphatic organ, it is going to be monitoring blood, not lymph. Lymph nodes monitor lymph. The spleen is going to monitor blood. And it's going to monitor it for two things. The first function of the spleen is that it degrades old red blood cells. And so typically in anatomy courses, you'll refer to the spleen as the graveyard of red blood cells. Um, and that's one of its important functions. So when blood is moving into the spleen through the splenic artery, and of course that artery is going to divide many times, it's bringing with it red blood cells, but also platelets. Okay? And so if red blood cells are damaged, and they're not serving their function, or platelets, same thing, damaged, not serving their function, then the spleen is going to be able to detect that and destroy those red blood cells, and even though I didn't mention it, it's going to destroy old damaged platelets. Okay? And the reason that the spleen is able to do that is because it has a blood supply. It's not a lymph supply, it's a blood supply. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. The other thing that the spleen is going to do that you typically don't talk about when you're discussing red blood cells, is that it actually can mount an immune response against foreign matter in the blood. So there is always a chance, always a chance that you can actually have pathogens in the blood. That's never a good thing. But if there's pathogens or foreign material of any kind in the blood, then that material is eventually going to make its way to the spleen. And so you'd want to theoretically mount an immune response against it. Okay, And so the spleen is going to be very similar to the lymph nodes in a lot of ways. And to illustrate that the spleen is very similar in function to the lymph nodes, I'm going to bring up this slide, which I have changed a little bit because for the lymph node, uh, I had to put lymph here. But for the spleen, this is going to be blood, but it's going to be very, very similar. Okay, This is like the TSA agents at the airport. Blood's coming into the spleen. Okay, um, And so the white blood cells that are present in the spleen, so B cells, T cells, they're going to be monitoring the contents of the blood. And if that blood contains harmful pathogens, these white blood cells are going to sense it, and they're going to mount an immune response against it. Again, I've used this example many, many times in some of the other videos that we've done over this topic, so I'm just kind of glossing over it at this point. But understand that the blood's contents are being monitored by the spleen for both damaged red blood cells and platelets and harmful substances or pathogens. And in order to accomplish this, uh, these two different functions, we have different regions of the spleen. So we have first what's called red pulp, then we have white pulp. Okay? The red pulp is involved in the mechanical filtration of red blood cells. Okay? So this red pulp is going to contain red blood cells, platelets, plasma, and macrophages. And additionally, the blood that comes into the red pulp areas of the spleen is going to be filtered for damaged or old red blood cells and platelets, 
And if those are detected, then those are going to be degraded by macrophages. So the spleen is going to contain macrophages, which are going to degrade those old red blood cells and platelets. And that's primarily going to occur in the red pulp. Okay. So again, in this cross section of the spleen right here, this outer region that surrounds the white region, okay, so we could say that the red pulp is more superficial, that's going to be where the red blood cells are destroyed. And we talked about this function in another video, and you probably did in anatomy, much earlier. The other thing that's probably new with the lymphatic system is the white pulp. The white pulp is deep to the red pulp, so this kind of whitish area that you see in the spleen right here, these are the white pulp areas, okay? And the primary function here is to participate in immune responses to pathogens that come in through, through the blood, okay? And so to combat that, those pathogens, we have also lymphoid follicles. So here's a primary follicle. Um, this is gonna be very dense with white pulp, okay? And these lymphoid follicles are rich in B cells. So these things that kind of look almost like a flower those are your lymphoid follicles and they're very rich in B cells. We also have this other region of white pulp which is called paraarteriolar lymphoid sheaths or PALs. This is one region of the white pulp very similar to the marginal zone and these two regions are very rich in T cells. So again there is a division sort of within the white pulp where you have B cells versus T cells but the point is is that both of these types of white blood cells are contained in the spleen and they're just waiting there waiting there for uh, foreign material to come and they will mount an immune response against it. Okay, So particularly with the white pulp and we've got these, this TSA system in the spleen, we've got these white blood cells, um, this is very similar to what we see with the lymph node. But remember the major difference is the lymph node monitors the contents of lymph. The spleen monitors the contents of blood and that's also why it's able to monitor the blood for red blood cells and platelets. So hopefully this video gives you a good intuition and understanding of the spleen. In the next video, we're going to talk about a, an interesting organ of the lymphatic system called the appendix. And so hopefully um, you'll join us then. Hopefully this video helped. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.